enablers and collaborators. Former Republican Congresswoman Liz Cheney, she has some choice words for her former colleagues in her new book, Oath and Honor. Cheney depicts a Republican Party that is willing to abandon any and all principles for the sake of one man, the disgraced ex-president, described by one of her fellow congressmen as, quote, orange Jesus. CNN has obtained a copy of Cheney's book. While well, NBC News has not independently verified the anecdotes reported by CNN, a source tells NBC that CNN's reporting is true to the actual copy of the book. Inside Cheney's memoir are a ton of revelations including this one, likely to perk up the ears of prosecutors and special counsel Jack Smith's office. Quote, Cheney reveals for the first time that McCarthy told her just two days after the election that he had talked to Trump and that Trump acknowledged he had lost the 2020 election. He knows it's over, McCarthy said, according to the book. He needs to go through all the stages of grief. Cheney writes, she thought to herself, those stages of grief seem to involve tweeting in all caps. We all know what happened after the election. Donald Trump tried desperately to overturn his election defeat. Kevin McCarthy enabled him every step of the way. As said the current speaker, Mike Johnson. Here's what Cheney says about him from CNN. Quote, Cheney recounts how Johnson pressured Republican members to support an amicus brief to throw out the election results from four states Trump had lost. When I confronted him with the flaws in his legal arguments, Cheney writes, Johnson would often concede or say something to the effect of, we just need to do this one last thing for Trump. According to Cheney, doing one last thing for Trump effectively became the Republican Party's agenda. Here's what happened just before the Capitol was attacked on the 6th. Quote, Cheney describes a scene in the GOP cloakroom where members were encouraged to sign their names on electoral vote objection sheets lined up on a table, one for each of the states Republicans were contesting. Cheney writes, most members knew it was a farce and another public display of fealty to Donald Trump. Among them was Republican Congressman Mark Green of Tennessee, Cheney writes. As he moved down the line, signing his name to the pieces of paper, Green said sheepishly to no one in particular, the things we do for the orange Jesus. In the aftermath of the insurrection, Cheney's vote to impeach the ex-president and her refusal to back down from that vote cost her her position in Republican leadership and ultimately her seat in Congress. Her conclusion now, quote, I am very sad to say that America can no longer count on a body of elected Republicans to protect our republic. Every one of us, Republican, Democrat, Independent, must work and vote together to ensure that Donald Trump and those who have appeased, enabled, and collaborated with him are defeated. This is the cause of our time. And that is where we start this hour with Washington Post congressional investigation reporter Jackie Alemani, also with us, editor-at-large for The Bulwark, Charlie Sykes, and with me at the table for the hour, New York Times editorial board member Mara Gay. But first, let's go to the former member of the January 6th Select Committee and Democratic Congressman Adam Schiff. He is also running for Senate in California. Congressman, thank you for being with us. What is your reaction to what Cheney is now saying about her former colleagues? Well, it goes to a fundamental truth of the last six years, which is that Donald Trump could not have done any of the damage that he inflicted, uh, the tearing down of our institutions, the causing Americans to distrust our election process and weakening the foundation of our system, and that is uh, voting, uh, but for the willing enablement of so many of her colleagues in Congress. Uh, and, you know, one of the terrible realizations of these years is just how many enablers there were and how few people of courage and conviction uh, there were also. And, uh, you know, gets to, I think, a fundamental truth that the historian Robert Carroll once uh, described in an interview when he said that power doesn't corrupt as much as it reveals. It doesn't always reveal us for our best, but it says a lot about who we are. Well, power revealed Liz Cheney uh, and Adam Kinzinger to be people of great courage and conviction. But it also revealed that for every Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger, there were literally 100 Kevin McCarthy's and Elise Stefanik's. And this is what has put our democracy in such peril. Congressman, let's talk about this question of, of courage. Cheney describes a caucus that is often in fear of Donald Trump. And I want to read a particularly telling bit from CNN's reporting about the book. Quote, she recounts how a GOP colleague, who she doesn't name, told her he knew what Trump had done was impeachable. But he was afraid that voting to impeach would put his wife and new baby in danger. I absolutely understood his fear, Cheney writes, but I also thought, Perhaps you need to be in another job. Congressman, you are no stranger to threats. You are no stranger to intimidation. 
particularly because of the stance you have taken against the ex-president. Do you share Liz Cheney's attitude on this, which is, if you can't stand the heat, get out the kitchen? Uh, absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, you're right. Uh, this is a very dangerous trend we have seen of increasing acceptance and advocacy of political violence, I think, egged on by the former president. But if you're not willing to do your job, uh, even when it uh, involves getting threatened, then you better find another job right now, uh, because there are more, th more things more important. Uh, and, and standing up for a constitution and defending uh, your, your uh, responsibilities and, a, you know, living up to your oath of office uh, is, to me, the most important. Uh, you know, I remember speaking to Adam Kinzinger, uh, and he was saying that uh, people keep saying that, you know, Liz and I are so courageous. It's not that we're so courageous, but we're surrounded by cowards. And I think <laughs> what we have come to learn is, while we knew, I think, inherently that courage can be contagious, what we also found during these years is so can cowardice. And because no one would speak out, no one would speak out. And there was this herd mentality, and there still is, people afraid of Donald Trump, unwilling to do the right thing when they know the right thing uh, because they're either in fear of their personal safety or more often just the pedestrian concern over whether they get to keep their job. Uh, and, you know, for those members, I would just say there are more important things than keeping your job. Being able to look at yourself in the mirror ought to be one of them. Well, let's pick up on that thread because there is an anecdote that is reported by CNN out of Cheney's memoir where she talks about the fact that there was resistance on the part of some Democrats to having her name to the 1-6 committee. Nancy Pelosi's staff in Cheney's retelling hands her a list of all of the perhaps critical things that Cheney had said about Pelosi in the past year. And Pelosi looks at the list and says, so what, why are you wasting my time, right? And so Cheney says she has admiration for Pelosi's leadership, that she agrees with Pelosi on the one thing that matters most. Your colleague Jamie Raskin has said much the same. He doesn't agree with Cheney on anything. They do agree on safeguarding democracy. Is there a cross-party coalition for democracy? What would it look like for a group of Republicans and Democrats to come together on this core issue? Uh, well, it would look, I think, a lot like the January 6th committee. And I love that anecdote about Nancy Pelosi because it's so classic. Nancy Pelosi, it doesn't matter what Liz may have said in the past. What matters and mattered to Nancy Pelosi is, is she the right person for this committee to do this work? And she clearly was. Uh, you know, but for Adam and Liz on that committee, none of these witnesses would have come forward. Uh, what made the hearing so powerful is that all the witnesses, almost all of them were Republicans. They came forward because of Liz and Adam. Uh, and with the leadership together, Benny Thompson, uh, we worked together, notwithstanding, you know, deep ideological differences that, that each of us had with each other. Uh, I never thought I would be singing so many praises of a Cheney before, but I came to deeply respect her. Uh, and I think that was very mutual uh, in terms of all of us on the committee. So I think there, there certainly is a cross-party, nonpartisan uh, coalition devoted to our Constitution. You see a lot of Republicans out of office uh, speaking in the same way that Liz is. And uh, I wish there were more people in elected positions of power willing to do that as well.